So you want to take photos like your favorite Instagrammers or Instagram photographers and um, this video is here to explain to you essentially how. So welcome back to the channel everyone. I hope you've enjoyed all the content we've made thus far. Um, today we're talking about style essentially, a style of photography and a style in a lot of Instagram photographers in my particular niche of photography, those who travel and those who really focus on more of the earthy, gritty tones out there. And what we're going to be talking about more specifically is how you can take your personal favorite Instagram photographers, whoever it may be at all, and how you can start to learn from how they actually take photos and apply that to your own. So you can not quite mimic their style, but start to get a feel of how they think when they shoot to get the results that they get. So I've got a few of my personal favorite Instagram photographers up here on the screen right now. And we're going to talk through some of their styles just to explain their thought process and what I think their thought process is going into a lot of their photography. So let's get into this. Our first photographer we have here is a someone by the name of Sam O. o Otika. I'm a British photographer. So his style is really within this green and gold feel. As you can see, super present in all of his style here. So we're just currently scrolling through his Instagram feed and I'm just trying to get a feel of what his vibe is and what you can already see. And especially if you look at this photo in the center here, I'll pull it up. So this photo in the center is a really good example of what I was saying. Time of day is key. And what you can see on the left side of this mountain range, is where all the highlights are hitting and on the right side of the mountain range is where all the shadows are falling. So essentially what I'm trying to get point across here is that none of these photographers, and I'm gonna start with this example, shoot in the middle of the day. They really choose when the optimal times to shoot these photos are. And essentially this could have been either very early in the morning or that golden hour afternoon. My guess is going to be golden hour afternoon, just given how there's a gold cast put over the entire image. That's what I'm going to start with. Just know that time of day is key to be able to <clears throat> to be able to produce content that you actually want to produce with in terms of lighting and just how that um, affects the image. Here's another really good example. The sun is hitting on the left side of the image and the right side of the image is darker, creating a really nice punchy contrast, which is just really pleasing to look at. Also, the dolomites are insane. Every photo you see of the dolomites is so good. As we scroll through here, um, none of his images are overexposed. None of his images have really harsh lighting. The one example I think we have here is probably, where was it? Probably this one here. Um, and that is just because the water in the river or the lake here essentially has reflected and bounced the sun directly off of it, giving it more of a blown out look. But again, the rest of the image is very, very, really inviting and warm. So there's no blown out area. And what we can see here, if we look further into his images, is it looks like he cuts off and crushes his blacks and both with his whites. And this creates this really warm kind of soft look to images, especially if you drop the clarity in a lot of these images as well. Um, just by crushing the black, there's no harshness in the blacks. None of the blacks obviously peak, giving it really like a harsh look. It's very soft. It's very wispy feeling. Nothing is really sh too, too black or white. This is another really good example. The blacks even in this uh, little middle picture here, the blacks just aren't quite pitch black. They're more of like a soft crushed gray look. So. We're talking here, we're talking really optimal times of day. We're talking crushing blacks and crushing whites, which makes it a really soft contrast. And his color scheme that he's essentially chosen and that is through his choice of photography too, is greens, turning all his greens into more of an ember and leaving, well, yeah, turning all his greens into an ember and leaving a lot of the harsh greens as they are. And then pulling the blues into more of a little more of a teal and crushing the saturation of just the whole image. So that there is Sam Otika. Otika. I'm gonna um, leave that one there. I'm gonna leave his Instagram handle down below. Do check his stuff out. Also, none of these guys know that I'm making this video. This is just some of my personal favorite Instagram profiles. Moving right along. Next is someone I've actually found relatively recently. This uh, Instagram handle is I of She. Her name is Bree. She does travel and adventure. She's from California. 
and she has a really awesome style here. So as I scroll down her feed, we instantly see that the crushed blacks and crushed whites of the last profile is essentially gone. We have really harsh lighting in a lot of these images. For example, this one here with this heart formation in the stones. We really do see that there's a real one of vibrancy and color and that not quite midday as we do see shadows on the left side here, but it is a little more harsh time of day where the sun is beating down just a little bit more aggressively. Again, this is a style choice and it looks amazing in her photography. I think she does an amazing job. So what we see here is, again, we got really harsh colors. The whites are blown out on her body here. So she's not too scared about peeking or picking spots in her image that do blow out with color. As we go down here, we do just see a general theme of nature, obviously, and she has a really blue hue to a lot of her images. They work together and they work cohesively together because there is just a lot of blue and even her greens, if you can see, her greens are pulled towards a little more of that aqua feel. And that essentially ties in her whole profile here. Having that little bit of blue in all the images ties it all together. And again, what really pulls color together when you look at it as a whole is just the vibrancy of the color. These are very saturated photos. These are very, very colorful photos and they really just pull a lot of nature's beauty and a nature's color out of the image and just to really drive it home to the viewer. So if I was to put this style in a nutshell, I would say blue hues, so lots of sky, lots of uh, blues in the shadows. I would say very vibrant colors and I'd say harsh lighting is never a bad thing. So this is Eye of She and I think again her profile is amazing. Next is I think my favorite Instagram photographer just period. This is Alan Palander. Alan Palander. I'm pretty sure that is how you pronounced it. Um, and his style is, what do I say? Dark, relatively monotoned, crushed blacks, and just really well done. <laughs> so as we scroll through Alan's profile here, we do see a lot of saturation pulled out of the colors just in general across the board. We have a select few colors put back in. This is generally his warmer tones. We do see a lot of aquary or teal colors in his shadows and his just attention to detail when it comes to both landscape photography along with city photography and urban photography. He's just really got an eye for his style. <clears throat> Angles, his, uh, his selection for what he shoots and where he shoots is very particular. He knows what he's good at. He does cities, he does vehicles, he does portraits. He doesn't do a lot of nature stuff as we can see a couple here and there, but not too much. And he really just tailors in on what he's good at. And it's very, again, very simple, simple shapes, repetition. He's a architect, or by, um, an architect by course, I guess. He studied architecture, so. He's got an eye for this kind of building symmetry and how, even if you look into this Hong Kong photo right here, the buildings, how he's used his wide angle lens to make them flare a little bit at the top. It just balances correctly. He's got a very good eye for balancing and his green monotone kind of style that he's created with his editing really complement that of a city. And that's essentially what his whole style is. No matter where he is in the world, this monotone style stays constant and it's just his vibe. As you can see here, really simple shapes above, but repetition, symmetry, and just this beautiful composed image right here. So his composing of images is just something else. So Alan Palander, moody, as overused that word is, I'd say moody, lots of blacks, really warm blacks, if you were to explain that. Architecture, buildings, lots of monotone feel. That is how I would explain Alan Palander's and how you could start to look at his work and start to decipher how he works. And as one last thing to add to it, I don't believe any of these photos are shot past 8 a.m. These shadows and these highlights are so soft across the face. This looks like purely only morning shooting. And that is how he gets his style. He gets up early, he shoots early, and he gets these amazing photos in response to that. Let's go say response to that. Our last photographer I wanted to chat today is Someone by the name of Louise Klaas. Louise Klaas? I'm not sure exactly the pronunciation of the profile or the photographer's name. However, 
His work is some of the most unique portraiture work that I've personally come across and I've come to really love his style. So let's have a quick look. Just scrolling through here, the first thing that stands out are the skin tones. Skin tones, skin tones, skin tones. I've never seen such beautiful skin tones in people. Just how he's edited it, it everything just complements it all just looks so appealing to see how these skin colors are graded with the background. They're all very warm. It pulls out and it really complements every single model's features, the whole lot. He's an amazing photographer. But if I was to look into this, I would say, in terms of how he prepares for a shoot, it really does look like he, <clears throat> I mean, it's quite obvious that he does lean towards more of those warm, tones in his images. A lot of these have a slight orange hue to them. Every single photo essentially has a really slight orange hue. He chooses sunset. I believe every single photo here is shot at golden hour, which again makes them amazing. He's really focused on a teal and orange vibe. As you go through all these, you can see that the sunset has essentially put this orange coat over the entire images and he's put this teal sky or teal feel in the shadows and it's just this golden rich colored images again these are i believe i do believe these are pretty much all shot at golden hour and i've never seen someone make skin tones look this good in so many different scenes and scenarios so this is uh louis class on instagram and i really do believe he's an amazing photographer do check his stuff out he sells presets and if you like presets do check those out as well um and that is essentially how i look at Instagram photographers and how each of them have their styles be so unique to one another. It's just, again, time of day, what they look at and what they really put themselves in in terms of scenario, they make it constant. So if we're out shooting landscapes, we shoot landscapes of a certain style. They always incorporate certain colors. So if you're always shooting forests, if you're shooting mountains, that incorporates rock, which means you use rock more often in a lot of your images. If it's portraiture, for example, in this last one, keep portraiture being consistent make your skin tones be consistent. You start shooting a golden hour, continue to shoot a golden hour. Another really good example is Brandon Wolfel and how he's really used his vibrant neon expressionist color scheme to be able to create his work. So look at time of day, where the sun is placed, how the shadows fall off, how they crush shadows or how contrast images are. Uh, there's a lot of people who do the exact opposite and make the shadows really dark and black and that makes a really quite unique look. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed the video that we did create today. Um, it was a blast to make. Um, please do hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, all that sort of good stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you once more time for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.